Yo, yo, yo! What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Doki Doki... Yeah, Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm stumbling on my words because, listen... We about to get into the next part of the side stories. Like, the last one, the last one, Nasuki just joined the club. And, you know, of course, we had some conversation between the club members, you know. That's how it is, but everything seems like it's stable now. Hopefully. So now we're on to the next one. Balance. Let's do this. Okay, yeah, I remember in the last one, she said she was making something for the club, and it ended with... The next club meeting was particularly tasty, and we're about to see why, you know. Nasuki! While Nasuki is messing with the orientation of her manga in the closet shelves, Nasuki approaches from behind and pulls her into an embrace. What? Hi. <laughs> Hi. The Lurger Club has been in full swing since Nasuki joined. Including her, the club is now comprised of four members. Siori, Nasuki, Yuri, and Monica. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share off their favorite kinds of literature with each other. Nasuki was first and shared her passion for manga. Then Siori shared her love for poetry as well as how she goes about writing it herself. Monica, who has multiple literary interests, decided to focus her day on short stories. And finally, Yuri managed to demonstrate her obsession with fantasy with a little help and encouragement from Sayori. After the week was spent on their presentations, Monica decided to give the club members this next week to freely explore each other's literary interests. Sayori, having spent most of her time in the club so far with Yuri's fantasy books, is rather excited to begin her journey into excuse me, Nasuki's manga collection. I want to read with you today. Tell me which one I should pick. Uh, well that kind of depends on what stuff you like. I mean, there's like romance, drama, comedy, mystery. I like all those things. Sarah reaches out and pulls a random book from the shelf and expects the cover. Shouldn't this girl be wearing more clothes? Y you wouldn't like that one! In a panic, Natsuki snatches the book from Sayori's hand, then replaces it on the shelf in a less conspicuous location. Wait. What do you mean, like, less? Should, should be wearing more clothes? What? Okay, Natsuki reads that. The sexual stuff, too? Okay. Okay. Okay, well, if you really have no preference, then let's start with something that's easy to get into. A lot of these don't start to get really good until the few volumes in, and I wouldn't ask someone to make that kind of commitment unless they're already into manga. I can handle it. I did it with Yuri's book at least. Well, I'm more considerate than that. Although I'm kind of impressed by your attention span if you put that much into her books. No, I have the attention span of a donut. I can't pay attention. But I love my friends, and I could do anything if it's for them. Well, okay then. Let's pick you something that even donuts can read. I didn't say I was a donut, I just said I had the attention span of one. You were just trying to call me Seek, weren't you? You're so cute. How did you get- no! How did you get into that conclusion? And don't call me that. We already know. A donut? Cute. Aw, oh, how come? I just don't like it. I don't need a reason. Nasuki yanks a book from the shelf and pulls the closet doors. Yep, classic Nasuki. We know this. If someone asks you to stop, then you need to just stop. People need to realize that. I I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Nah, I'm sorry. It wasn't you. Nasuki shakes her head while pulling a second chair over to her desk. Is there... A is there like a legitimate reason why she doesn't like being called cute? Maybe we'll find that out. I was talking about someone else. Oh, something else. I didn't mean to get angry all of a sudden. We're probably going to find out, and I'm excited to see. Natsuki averts her glaze, gaze and mumbles. You're like, well, like a nice person, so I wasn't talking about you. I still learned a valuable lesson. Sari speaks softly as well feeling shy after receiving the unexpected compliment. Well, anyway, here's the book, so just start it whenever you feel like it. What's it about? Well, it's like a comedy, and there's romance too, obviously. Sari looks at a title. It's called 
Love is another word for luck. It's about a girl who keeps accidentally running into the same guys. And then you find out like, well, you should just read it. I'm not going to tell you everything. But you have to tell me what you think. I can already guess who you're going to ship yourself with. It would be so funny if I'm right. Shit, I don't get it. Never mind. Let's just not worry about that yet. Just, just make sure you tell me what you think. Okay. I'll start then. Hey, maybe tomorrow we could do poetry too. Oh, um, yeah, I guess. But don't you want to finish this first? Yeah, but we could do both. I mean, unless you don't like poetry, then I won't make you or anything. You know she likes poetry. She told you that. She told everyone that. No, it's just... Well, never mind. We can worry about it tomorrow. She told you she liked poetry. After the club meeting ends, and Yuri and Nas... Well, Yuri and Nasuki leave. I said it flipped, but you know what? I might as well do it. Monica strikes up a conversation with Sayori. I see you got Nasuki to share her manga with you. I really want to become better friends with her. She's so enthusiastic and expressive. I could just listen to her talk. She's so cute. I, I'm not sure if she meant I can't say it to her or if I just can't say it at all. Say what? Nothing. I'm a woman of respect. But Nas Nasuki is a woman of cute. Oh, I, I, I did say it though, didn't I? What's so bad about that? I don't know. But you know, there's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Sometimes I'm afraid that Nasuki actually doesn't like me very much. That's ridiculous. How come you feel that way? Well, I mean, just little signs. Like how she only says hi to me after I say hi to her first. And it feels like she only gets excited to talk to me when it's about manga and other stuff she likes. She just seems dismissive a lot. She was like that when I brought up poetry. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like you. She's probably just shy about it, you know? Maybe. I don't know. My stupid head is making me worry for no reason. It likes to do that. We already know what your head likes to do to you. It's okay. Try not to worry so much. Everything will be great. But you can always talk to me about any concerns that you have. I'm here to help. You're the best. Sari gives Monica a quick hug. Well, I'm going to keep trying because I love her and I want to get closer to her. You got this. That's, that seems like something Sari would say to Monica. You got this. After next club meeting starts, Sari is the last one in as usual. Trotting into the room, she sees Natsuki sitting alone by the closet, reading what must be manga. Without hesitation, Sari pulls up a chair and plops herself down right next to Natsuki. Hello there! Hi. What you reading? Can I read it with you? Natsuki pulls the book away from Sari. You can't just start in the middle. There are spoilers. Besides, what about the one I gave you yesterday? Sorry, I was just curious. Well, anyway, I've been waiting forever for this volume to come out, and it just came out yesterday, so... Oh, that's exciting. Well, I'll let you read it then. Mm-hmm. Can I sit right next to you, though? Uh, sure. Sari plops herself right down next to, next to Nasuki, then pulls out a blank sheet of paper. Nasuki reads in silence, save for the periodic flutter of page being released from beneath her thumb. From Sayari's side, only the light tapping noises of her pen needing the paper can be heard. Time passes. Sayari's paper is filled with scribbles, and the margins are aligned with stick figures. Nasuki lets out a deep sigh and closes her book. Did you finish? No, but it's a good stopping point. My head is swimming. I need a break. Nasuki stretches her arms. Aren't you bored? No, I was writing. Oh, I saw all the stick figures and thought you were just bored. I just draw these when I'm thinking or waiting for an inspiration. I made friends with them all. This one is sad because she thinks the night sky is pretty, but she can't look up at the stars in public without everyone thinking she's a weirdo. And this one has problems with its back, but the doctor can't figure out what's wrong with him. What the heck? It... Problems with back? Judge... Sari, I see what you're doing. You're not slick. You're the weirdo. Wanna read the poem I'm working on? Sure, I guess. Sari slides the paper over to Nasuki. 
As Nasuki reads through the poem, she furrows her eyebrows. Hmm. She slides the paper back over to Sayori. Don't you ever feel weird just sharing all your thoughts and feelings like that? I mean, your poems are like, really emotional. Is that bad? Well, no. It was just an observation. I think people can get closer to each other if they find ways of expressing their feelings. Well... Nasuki begins to protest, but she can't find a good way of putting her thoughts into words. Doesn't that depend more on what kind of friends you have? I don't know. To each their own. But I've never met anyone who I feel comfortable sharing my poems with. Not yet. Not that it's you, it's, it's just how I am, so... You write poems? She did say she liked poetry, like come on. You had to think about that even a little bit. Dot, dot, dot. You never told me that. I just thought you wrote other stuff. But yeah, that too. But you should... I mean, would you ever want to share? Like I said, I don't do that. But can we talk about something else? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It just makes me uncomfortable. I, I can't help it. Still, I'm sorry. It's fine. Dot, dot, dot. Well, let's move on to something that makes us both happy. I should continue the book you gave me, since I didn't get very far yet. Sure. Nasuki's like, she is kind of dismissive, but we're probably going to find out why. Because you know, Sari can bring that out on people. Over the next few days, Sari begins each club meeting by approaching Nasuki with unwavering enthusiasm. It's Nasuki! The smile. Nasuki! <laughs> so it's going to show us every day when she... Hi, Nasuki! At the end of one club meeting, Monica, who has become rather invested in Sari's friendship mission, starts an in innocuous conversation with Nasuki while she packs up. It's cool that she's been finding time to spend with Sayori. She was pretty excited for the chance to read manga with you. Yeah. I'm sure you've been enjoying the chance to share it too, right? Yeah, mostly. Hmm? Nasuki glances over her shoulder, but she doesn't reply further. What's on your mind? Nothing. I don't talk about people behind their backs. What do you gotta say against Sayori? Oh. Nasuki falls silent, but she just fidgets instead of getting back to what she was doing. As though she wants to say more. You know she does. It's okay to share your feelings. That's different from talking about someone behind their back. I guess. I just hate when people talk about me behind my back. So I'm better to do it to others. I'm better than to do it to others. Monica shares a bright smile. You're really considerate. Um... Thanks, I guess. But it doesn't really feel like it. You can trust me. Nasuki stands in silence for a moment, still fidgeting. I, I just feel smothered sometimes. I'm not used to someone being like all over me right after we meet. I mean, it's fun to hang out with her, but I just have no control over the pace. I just can't meet someone and instantly become best friends with them and like share everything about myself. That's not how it works. I just want to chill out sometimes. Oh, I didn't realize that was happening. It's fine. Why would you have? I know. I just feel bad about it. I know Sayori, so I should have realized. Monica navigates through her tinge of guilt, which has surfaced mainly due to her being the one who previously encouraged Sayori's behavior. Despite not knowing the situation, Monica can't help but feel a little responsible. It's her fault, but it's not her fault. Do you want me to talk to her about it? No. I wouldn't like that. Well, I could... I don't know. I could, like, divert her into another club activity for you. Or something. No way. That would be so underhanded. And mean. Sorry. I didn't think that one through. Besides, just because I complain about it doesn't mean I'm asking for someone to solve my problems for me. True. I'm sorry. Everybody just says sorry a lot. I guess I'm just instinctively want to try to solve problems, even if I haven't been invited to. It's fine. I would talk to Sari about it, but it would make things really weird between us. I feel like it would just make her constantly be afraid that she's bothering me. I don't know how to just keep things natural. Well, I think if you do a good job expressing all your feelings, she would totally understand. Yeah, 
She literally had a whole freaking side story about it. Sherry really wants to be the best she can be for other people. I think she would actually be happy if you want to improve your friendship with her. Maybe. Ugh, it just feels so dumb. Talking to someone about how to be friends with them? It's just weird. And not cool. Monica shrugs. It's the literature club. Then she mumbles through a stiffle laugh. It's not the cool club. Hey! Sorry, that just tickled me for some reason. Look, I know that you're kind of in a tough spot, and that's hard for you to really express yourself. But you're really you really demonstrated to me that you're great in self-reflection and critical thinking, even if it doesn't feel like it to you. I think that's the most important part of being able to navigate through these things. So I believe that you'll find the right thing to do. Well... Nasuki instinctively starts to reject the compliment, but she can't find any excuse to do so, so just accept it. Thanks. Nasuki gathers her thing, then she finishes her thought in a mumble. And I'm still glad I joined the club, even if it's weird sometimes. Monica smiles, but Nasuki turns her back and walks away before waiting for a reply. It was an unusual way for Nasuki to express her appreciation, but Monica knew what she meant. It made Monica feel like everything really was going to be okay. It is going to be okay. We know this. Oh, shoot. That's the end of that one already? I was so surprised. It's lunchtime. Siri, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Siri's impeccable skills zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. You know who it is. Hey, that's Nasuki! I never ran to other club members around the school. Nasuki! Sari stands on her tippy toes and waves. Nasuki, who's busy walking and chatting with her friends, doesn't notice Sari at first. Then she glances over in Sari's direction. Sari waves enthusiastically. <coughs> Following her friends, Nasuki quickly ducks around a corner. Damn. Hey! She definitely saw me. Dot dot dot. Okay, now you're making that, uh, making Sari feel some type of way. Monica's the first to arrive to a club meeting, then Nasuki. Sari, having glanced through the window to see Nasuki already inside, is unable to work up the courage to enter. Nasuki's been so distant with me. I was so stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. Oh my gosh, see, this is. Y'all do this to Sayori knowing that she doesn't have a... Well, Monica's the only one that knows that, but... She does not have this mind to be thinking like this about... You know what she can do. Like... She only got excited because she wanted to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Oh, no! Um... Sorry, but do you plan on going inside? No. Why? I'm soaking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me! Uh oh. I I'll stay here then. I don't want to go in. I'm afraid of bothering Nasuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her. But instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Hmm. Not bad. Sorry, sorry, that was a joke. I just sound like something stupid that I would do from anxiety. From anxiety? Well, I just don't like the attention being drawn to myself. Oh, well that makes sense based on the person that you are. But Nasuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. But it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more instead of getting closer. It makes me feel like she was only spending time with me during the club because I was reading manga, but she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, well, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends. With her friends. Yuri pauses for a moment. How do I put this? Siri, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. Of course! I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always with my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... You hate being alone? 
Sari nods. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But I'm just a loner. So I think, well, if I wasn't trying to have a loan time and it was being threatened with an interruption, then it would just not make me very happy. Yeah, but that doesn't have to do with Nasuki. She already was already with her friends, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's similar. It's, well, we're all friends in the club, but we have our own lives outside the club as well. If you think about it, Making new friends isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine their lives together. But the captivity at which each person is ready to do that might be different. There are friends who just like to have fun together and others who can talk every day and share every detail with their lives with each other. I think even when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. I mean. We don't really know much about Nosuke's life outside of the club. It could be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace, rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. She's explaining it very, like, thought out for Sayori. But, that means I really was bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. My insight was really based on what I understand about my own needs. And Asuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even if all that is true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up. Oh no. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right... Balance. It's the name of the side story. They always they always try to find a way to put the word of the side story into when they say stuff. I like it. Now I hurt her, and she doesn't want to talk to me. How could I let myself do this? Um, Sayori? I think that, well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality, so... It's easy to automatically jump into the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Suki doesn't harbor any ill feelings towards you. So I think if we were realistically considered the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um... I, I'm bad at this, I'm sorry. You're a lot better at me than things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly, Sari gives Yuri a gentle hug. Um... You're the best, Yuri. I'm sorry for burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me. You're such a sweetheart. I, I, I just... I, it's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others. And my friends deserve happiness. Sari beams. Well, I think I'm going to give Nasuki some space. She should do what she wants. And if she does still want to be friends, then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's best. I wish I didn't feel so often guilty though. It makes me feel desperate, like I need to make it up to her by trying to make her happy. But that's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it means I still need to grow. Don't we all? I really want to grow as a person. So if it's better, if it's to be better for my friends, you know I want that. That's very mature of you, Sayori. <laughs> I am mature. Sorry, hops it down, up and down with her toes. So, does that mean you'll be going home after all? Sari shakes her head. I need to be here to show her that I respect her space. I'll just spend the club by myself today. Yuri nods in understanding. You can go in first though. Okay. Dot dot dot. You're blocking the door though. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sari steps aside. By the way, before Yuri entered the club room, Sari interjects. You said that you and Nasuka are completely different, but I don't really think that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Sari, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Sari, yeah. Yuri turns and enters the club room. After a moment, Sari follows. <laughs> this is, yo, this is funny, yo. The club room is quiet. When Sayori walks in, 
Nasuki glances in her direction. Sari smiles and gives Nasuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Sari decides it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she just pulls it out. However, it looks like Nasuki isn't even reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. She's probably writing. Oh, are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice, unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Nasuki's desk. Hey! Nasuki pulls the sheet close to her and covers it with her arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Whatever. I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Nasuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Nasuki's gaze. I think she's mad at me. How come? I, I'm busy right now. Ask me later. Monica falls silent. Nasuki looks back down at her paper. She inches her hand away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see. It says, To Sayori. What is she writing her? Understanding, Monica smiles. She places a hand on Nasuki's shoulder, shoulder and whispers softly, I'm proud of you. Huh? Nasuki looks away and makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Nasuki's shoulder a quick squeeze before standing up and pulling away. What is she writing? The end of the club meeting passes. Just... You know this music is when something serious is about to happen. Yuri has already departed. So has Monica, after checking in on Sayori and Nasuki to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out since the end was approaching. However, with Nasuki also staying late for an unknown reason, a silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing a volume, Sayori brings it to the closet to put it away. Uh-oh. She slides it back on the shelf while Nasuki watches. Then, Nasuki gets up and pulls it back in order to return to its proper location. Sorry, I didn't know where it was supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall silent again avoiding eye contact. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. Well, I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow! Mm. Sari turns away to hide her pain expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof Nasuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. Defeated, Sari carries herself out of the club room. Oh my gosh, this is not what... Oh my gosh, look at her face. Once in the hallway, Sari takes a deep breath and hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Uh, um... I'm glad she'd get there in the nick of time before Sari was starting to think some shit. Suddenly, Nasuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Nasuki? Startled, Nasuki turns her back around to face Nasuki. What? Did I say Nasuki again? Okay, I... Just don't worry about that. Nasuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. I, I have a lot of things to say. Me too. But you go first. Nasuki bites her lip and can't stay still. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Trying to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down low. I, I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch. And I'm sorry for being pitched kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to like, but I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable. Especially when it comes to like, like feelings and stuff. So, face burning, Nasuki clams up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds up a sheet of paper for a stereo tape. Oh shoot. Oh, she, she wrote a poem for her. The best place in the world. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colors and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, my memories. All my dreams were born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, my failures, my feelings, my fears. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch. But it still is the best place in the world. But then someone not Oh my gosh, hold on! But when someone knocks, I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. 
It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture. An eye picks through the keyhole, and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This has some meaning that I'm not understanding yet. I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put them away, to see them again. I have so much to do and I'm scared. I'm not ready, but it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually open the door and I'll show you the best place in the world. I think I understand what she's trying to say. It's a poem. But I thought, well, I sucked it up so I could work things out with you. So just, j just be happy about it. Please? Sari smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted and that we probably have different ways we like to make friends. Um, about like the friendship stuff. I mean, it's okay. I understand, so you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job, so don't force yourself if you're not ready yet, okay? Nasuki nods. So you don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault, and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually just felt really guilty and wanted to give you space. I was thinking that it's silly that I just approach you all the time, and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you comfortable. I respect it from now on. Friendship should always start with those things. With the right balance. Nasuki nods again. One thing about that. Hmm? Well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced. Like you said. Sari nods. I understand. Well, we'll make sure of that together then. Yeah. Well, anyway. Now that the two of them have find, found common ground, Nasuki finds it easier to speak more freely again. I'm not going to be like sharing my poems all the time now, or anything like that. But, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do every once in a while. Only the best continues. Oh, the best ones, I mean. So you better like them, because otherwise I might change my mind. I like anything you do, Nasuki. Huh? I, I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. Huh? Oh, from the manga. <laughs> Wait, I need to guess who it is. You definitely won't be able to guess. The two walk down the hallway together. Oh my gosh, we have so much to talk about. Darn. I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Aw, you wanted to enjoy it with me? That's so cute. Oh, shush. <laughs> she still said cute. She didn't even tell her not to say... That's how you end it. Alright, well, y'all, that's the end of that side story. We still got, like, hold on, hold on, before I end it. Hold on, hold on, before I end it. We got, like, we got two more side stories to do, and then we're done. Oh, my gosh, I didn't... I didn't want this I didn't want that day to come where it ends because we'll know the prequel and then we know the full story obviously because we did the actual game but we'll get there and y'all be here to see it with me. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.